with every day that passes, we get that much closer to a resolution happening between the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. But what will that resolution be? There are an endless amount of possibilities and different directions that this thing could go in. And my mind alone, by myself, I'm not even capable of fathoming all the different possibilities and different situations that could this could lead to. So that's why for this video, I had to bring on a very, very special guest to help us take a deep dive into it and to help us break it all down. But before we get into it, I gotta ask this special guest a very important question. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the ravens, like the ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right? So team, keep it clean. Very, very special guest in the building. Got Rita, aka the NFL chick. Um, before we get into things, uh, I gotta ask you a question. Even before we introduce you and uh, everything that you got going on, how was the Palomar ice cream? It was really good. I mean. So I'm a person that likes all the components of payday bars, cause that's what it was supposed to be after. Mm -hmm. So I like peanuts. Um, I like car caramel, you, you got me. I don't really care. Everything else just falls into place, but anything caramel, I'm gonna try. Chocolate, of course. Um, so I, oh, peanut butter. So um, I, I went into it thinking I would like it. I don't really eat ice cream like that at this mm -hmm. big, stage of my life because you know you get older some stuff you can't tolerate no more <laughs> but i was willing to take a risk for this ice cream and it was well worth the risk i will say that it was really really good so it's funny because i don't i didn't at the place it's called the charmery and they have different locations here in baltimore and in maryland um, and I didn't tag them because I didn't know that they were on social media. But I mean, I, I should have known. Right. But I guess somebody told them about it because yeah. I saw that they had like seen it. So, okay. yes, I gave you all big up because it was good. And I hope you guys, if you like all of those things or at least tolerate those things, I think you should check it out. It's really good. All right. So shout out to the Chomery. Next time we up in town, we, we're going to have to check them out. Yes. But now um, on to business. Well, before we get to the business. Let, let, let's let the world know who you are, even though so many of them already know who you are because you be everywhere doing everything. But let everybody know who you are, what you do, and just the whole night. I mean, you know, I, I'm a guest. I've been a guest on here before. So, you mm -hmm. know, I'm Rita, the NFL chick, um, a co-host at 105.7 The Fan here in Baltimore. And sometimes I do things on Peacock's Brother from Another Whenever they call me, I say, hey, go ahead and put me on. So, yeah, I mean, that's those are the things. Oh, and I, and I am an avid tweeter as oh, well. Yeah. So yeah, you can true. find me at the NFL Chick. I do tweet a lot. So if, that's, if it's um, going to be too much for you, please do not follow me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's real, though, because if you follow her, yeah, you're going to see her tweeting. I mean, I'm just saying. I just want to. I'm being honest. I don't. I don't. I understand. It's a lot, you know. So if, if if that's too much for you, it's it's too much engagement. Completely understand. Just don't do it. Just look peek in every now and again from afar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to get to it, um, you tasted the the Pay Lamar ice cream, and what a lot of people are wondering now is what's going to happen. Are the Ravens going to pay Lamar? Uh, well, they've of course been negotiating for a really, really long time. And we've continued to hear so many different reports from left, from right, from up and down about what's happened, what hasn't happened. Is it guaranteed? Is it not guaranteed? All, all type of stuff. And the way that I've been looking at it is, all right, we won't know till we know. Yeah. When something's official, then I will see how it gets done. But the Ravens, of course, uh, a little bit ago, they placed the non-exclusive franchise tag on Lamar Jackson. How did you feel about them making that step and them choosing to do the non-exclusive versus the exclusive franchise tag? I mean, so I understood why, from a financial perspective, I understand the difference, right? Because the Ravens were already going to be over the cap and they were going to have to downplay their cap. And so obviously we know that there's a $13 million difference. Mm -hmm. I didn't love the idea though, because, you know, for one, if you don't 
find a suitor and he continues to want to negotiate, then $13 million less than what you would have been getting, um, you know, had you gotten the exclusive tag. And another thing is that, you know, it puts the Ravens at risk, or so I thought, to losing Lamar if a team like the Falcons, and I use the Falcons as an example because they had the second highest cap availability behind the Chicago Bears. Mm-hmm. With just over sixty-six million dollars, if the excuse me, if the Atlanta Falcons were to have put in an offer for him, and it's front loaded, very heavy, could yeah. be the same exact contract, right? But if the front load is heavy because they have the cap space, the Ravens wouldn't wouldn't be able to match it. I thought it was risky and low key arrogant because um, mm-hmm. I said that. I said if 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 this works out for them, the Ravens clearly know something that we don't. And then shortly thereafter. We started seeing teams come out and saying, you know, they weren't Mm going to be in the running and they weren't going to be in the running. And don't get me wrong, because at first it was full on C word for me. Um, And I Mm -hmm. still do feel that way. Um, But I have changed my stance a little bit on I do think there's some other elements that could be involved in that. Um, And we had Jason Reed on our show uh, yesterday, Glenn and myself from Mm -hmm. ANSI. And Jason Reed agreed that the C word, because I don't want to say it because then you'll, hey, the lawsuits come, I ain't got no money, right? <laughs> so I, I got to make sure I ain't saying that word out loud. If the C, so the C word, we believe that the C word exists mm-hmm. and not necessarily exclusive to, Ma, to Lamar, but it was not a secret that after um, the the Browns paid Deshaun Watson the money that they paid, that the mm-hmm. rest of the owners were livid about it. It is right. not a secret that they were not happy about it. So do I believe that they came to an agreement. I don't know how, whether it was discussed actually or just, you know, a, a thing like, hey, I ain't going, I'm not going to be the one to be next. And then people was like, neither am I, neither am I. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But somehow, some way, I think the rest of the owners were like, hey, I'm not getting involved in guarantee, fully guaranteed contracts. I'm not going to do that. So I, I, I don't think that this is about Lamar specifically. I think that, you know, they're, the owners are banding together in terms mm-hmm. of trying to figure out uh, the guarantee situation. But Jason Reed also brought up some other things, one in which I do agree with. Um, I don't think that owners or GMs want to do the dirty work for the Ravens because mm-hmm. if they feel like the Ravens want to match the offer, then to them it could absolutely be a waste of time and they don't have time to waste if they're looking yeah. for a quarterback. So that's possible. Um, Jason Reed also mentioned the fact that maybe the, the, because the offense that Lamar was in, they tailored it around his skill set. And so maybe it's very possible that uh, GMs and owners don't necessarily want to do that. Now, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I think that the talent of Lamar is, is, is you'll take the risk and you'll do what you want to do. If you want to argue about the injury situation, oh, okay, maybe, right? Mm-hmm. Potentially. Because it's been at the end of, of two seasons in a row. But right. I don't necessarily believe that it's because you would have to scrap whatever offense that you're in. Because we act like Lamar didn't play in a pro-style offense ever before. And to mm-hmm. me, that is an excuse. The other things, okay, maybe. But I do think that the biggest thing is the C word. And that they are saying we're not going to continue the trend of uh, fully or very, very close to fully guaranteed contracts. Yeah. Yeah. It does seem like that could be uh, going down. Um, somebody uh, brought up a really good point, a subscriber on here. And he talked about how, say, for instance, with them doing the, non, uh, the non-exclusive the non franchise tag, uh, say, for instance, another team, they signed Lamar to an offer sheet and it's fully guaranteed. Uh, and the Ravens, they like they, they match it. They could be like, Ravens could be like, oh, well, we wanted to keep our quarterback, but yeah, we didn't want to do the fully guaranteed, but we really had no choice because we really want to keep our guys. So this is on that team. This is not Absolutely. really on us. Yep. So it's the, the whole non-exclusive. I, I was, when they first, when it came out that they placed the non-exclusive franchise tag on them, I was thinking right away, I said, oh yeah, that's a wrap. He's gone. There ain't no more Lamar with the Ravens anymore. Um, but the, the, the longer that this thing has gone on and it really hasn't even been that long, hasn't even been a full week yet, but the longer that this thing has gone on. Um, and then of course, with the reports, like literally immediately after, like it was like, teams wasn't even trying to hide it. Man. The, when, when you talk about that alleged C word, they, they weren't even trying to hide it. They were like, Oh no, we're not interested. We ain't going to pursue him. We're not going to be in and running for Lamar. Literally right after the Ravens announced that they placed the, the non-exclusive franchise tag on them, all these teams just start 
dropping out of the Lamar sweepstakes or whatnot. Um, so and it's, then the it's, one, look, no, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the, no, the you one don't. team that really couldn't afford them then decided to come back and say, well, we're in the free eight. We're going to be in the market for any quarterback, and that includes Lamar Jackson, and, and that was the Vegas Raiders. And then they turned around and signed, uh, signed Jimmy <laughs> Garoppolo, which honestly – works best for them because that's what they can afford. Let's be mm. clear. They don't have no money. They basically can't fire their coach because they don't have no money. Mm -hmm. So, but the but you tried to use the Raiders who everybody knew didn't have any money to say, "Hey, can you go out there and say that you you'll go ahead and uh, mm. act like you're going to go for Lamar. Everybody knows y'all don't have it." Yeah. You know, so you could have found somebody else to lie about that and made it believable. The Raiders. Mm, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, the the whole thing is, uh, it, it, it was just fishy. It, it yeah. was just fishy. Yes. Uh, from the jump. Um. So, I mean, the way that it's looking, we we won't know. Like I said, we won't know till we know uh, until March fifteenth, uh, four p.m. Eastern time. That's when they they can start talking. Teams can start yeah. talking. Lamar can start talking to them. Um. Now. Something that's also come up, and I've seen you speak about it before. Shout out to your Twitter. Um. Lamar can't talk to anybody till March 15th, but had he had an agent, then he would have been able to speak to people uh, starting today, today. Well, mm -hmm. today, March, March 13th. Which when we all know it. they started at the combine, but that's not oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> how, how do you think him not having an agent? Do you think that impacts anything? How do you think that that affects just anything overall? Um, I have been a proponent of him having an agent from the beginning of time. I have not changed my stance on this. I do not change my stance on this. Um, agents, to me, find ways to get things done in a way that um, incentivizes the player. Obviously, the more the player get, it incentivizes the agent. So, of course, they're going to try to maximize what they can get out of the ownership because they want that that increases um, their pay. In addition to that, nowadays, all of the a lot of these agencies are one stop shop agencies. And even if they don't have marketing people in their agency, they have people that they deal with directly on, from a contractual perspective that they have business relationships with. So for me, I've always felt that Lamar should be on every TV, on every commercial during NFL games. I had to sit there and watch Baker Mayfield do progressive <laughs> commercials. I, I feel like at one point, May Baker Mayfield had more progressive commercials than he did wins at one point until mm. that like 2020 season came. And so um, for me, it's not just about the Ravens contract. Although, yes, I think that a contract would have been done had he had one. But it, to me, it's about maximizing his likeness. Maximize the things that we talk about in college football are the things to me that applies for Lamar because he doesn't have an agent. And I understand, you know, we want to do this fight the power thing. And I understand that y'all want to sit here and lie and say Roquan Smith didn't have an agent. Well, you, you didn't lie. But what I want you to understand is that Roquan Smith had a person come in and negotiate a person that literally just does not have the title of agent, but is can absolutely do everything else that the agents do. The difference is he's not registered under the NFLPA. I had to say that. I had to get that out because that's very disingenuous of our fan base to continue to say that because he had someone do his work for him. He did not go into the office with EDC and do it himself. Okay. So even if Lamar did something like that, where this person is short of an agent, maybe lesser fees potentially because he's not listed as an agent. I take that because it also opens the door for so many other opportunities for him the, you know, we talked about we heard about the shoe deal that potentially fell through or whatever, whether or not that's true or not. Lamar absolutely should have been on Nike's radar. And do you know how fantastic that commercial would have been between him and Michael Vick had something come about? This is a guy that I just feel like has always had to work so hard. And I just want him to get all of the money, all yeah. of it whether it's from a, the, the Ravens or whoever, the football team, but outside the organization. When you hear guys like Rob Gronkowski saying that they don't even use their money that they get from the teams, they live off of their endorsements. Mm -hmm. That's what I want for Lamar Jackson because he deserves that. A unanimous MVP deserves every single dime that should come his way. And I think having an agent would have maximized his money in that way. Yeah, and, and with Lamar, yeah, I agree that he does definitely deserves all, all the bread and, and all the endorsement deals and whatnot. And um, we'll see how that goes in the future as far as him not having an agent because uh, he has a big opportunity here, uh, him and his camp, to really uh, be trendsetters 
uh, as far as not going the um, not going the uh, the typical route uh, as an NFL player. Yeah. Um, but I I'm sure you can attest to it. Um, I, I can too, for the couple of times that I've met him, like there's some football players that you meet. <laughs> they ain't so friendly, man. They, they not nice. They're not likable people. Um, some can be a little arrogant and whatnot. And that's, that's can be just people in general, but Lamar's not like that. Yeah. Um, the, I only met him a couple of times, but neither time he was on no cocky thing. And obviously he's super popular and, and down here, like him being from down here, he's super popular too. But he was never on that. He was always like the same Lamar that we would see at, at the presses. Well, those that see the presses from afar, I know you be at the presses a lot of times, but the same Lamar that we would see at the presses, uh, just super calm, humble guy, joking around. That's exactly how it would be uh, when you actually meet him. Super yeah. nice guy and whatnot. So when you have uh, somebody and they just they so happen to play for your favorite team, um, and and then you met them, it's like you 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 root for them more and you yeah. root for their success uh, that much more. So hopefully uh, it happens with Lamar Jackson. Now, um, what do you think is is gonna go down uh, as far as Lamar Jackson? And the Ravens or Lamar Jackson and possibly somebody else, the whole offer sheet thing. What do you think is going to be next for Lamar Jackson? This is the part that is very interesting because it, it, I feel like we have no pulse on any scenario, right? Get, like yeah. we can come up with a ton of them, yeah. <laughs> but the actual pulse of like where you think this could go. I mean, I, I would like to be optimistic that the Ravens either – um, if someone if, if someone does, you know, put the offer in, the Ravens match it and he stays um, or they find a way to negotiate and get a deal done. Mm -hmm. um, that to me is the most ideal. It frees up some cap space so you can get some wide receivers and some other players. <laughs> um, and, you know, obviously Lamar gets his money. But there is a, a very, very there's a scenario out there that what if Lamar says, you know, don't sign the offer sheet if a team offers because I, I don't want to, I'm not going to play here anymore. Mm. Or would there's a possibility of him saying, I'm just going to ride this out again. Y'all can tag me again if y'all want to. And then I think that there's a 20% increase if he does, if he gets tagged yeah, again next time. year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's very possible that he continues to try to play this out into his way until he plays his way into free agency. And that's not beneficial for the Ravens, obviously, because they have a cap that they have to, to, to go by. But it just – I have no idea how any of this can be. It, it really all determines to me, I think, on – if someone offers and I feel like that that should happen sooner more than later because you have the draft coming mm -hmm. up. Right. And people really want to kind of get some things settled right. in terms of that. Now, obviously we know that if a team puts in an offer sheet after the draft, that means that it won't be their picks until 24 and 25. But right. I, I don't know who's willing to wait that long to figure out their quarterback situation, unless you feel like you're just looking down the road. But yeah. ultimately, I, I really would like to see this get resolved prior to the draft. <laughs> because if if, the, if if it's not going to work and the Ravens need a quarterback, well, what are they going to do about it? Mm. <laughs> you know, what are they going to mm. do? Because Tyler Huntley, I think, is uh, they, they haven't even is he a restricted free agent? I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, you gotta that you gotta worry about your backup quarterback situation in addition to your quarterback situation. And mm. having so many uncertainties going into the draft can't bode well for a franchise. Mm. So yeah. I wish I knew how this was gonna go. I'm gonna be hopeful that it means that the Ravens and Lamar will find a way to get it done, even if it's a short term deal and then it allows him to go into the market after like three years, right? Mm. Maybe. But I, I just really hope that they find a way to get this resolved sooner than later so then the Ravens can try to give him some extra pieces they need to move forward in the playoffs. Yeah, hey, that would be really nice, especially when you talk about moving forward in the playoffs. They could do a little <laughs> more in there. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how things go. But Rita, yeah. appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for, for making time for us. Um, and what we Always. know is a very busy but productive schedule. An efficient schedule. Um, so thank you one more time before we get out of here. Let everybody know where they can find you. At. Um, at the NFL Chick on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And I did very well. You would like to know of keeping it clean with my guy engravings, <laughs> but I do not keep it clean on my page. So I'm going to get better. 
I am gonna I'm gonna work on it. I just don't hey. know when that day is going to come. But <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. It's a process. It is. You're right. It's a process. So uh, you can find me on there. Also at Gridiron Gals. That is my podcast with my co-host and my best friend Chels, and also the Winning Drive podcast with myself and Cordell Woodland oh, uh, from Shaking It Up Sports on 105.7 The Fan. Perfect. So I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. And Anytime. Team Keep It Clean, uh, y'all make sure y'all follow her as well. I have all the links to her, everything uh, down below in the description. We out. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy. He like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.